So it turns out ArduPilot has an autonomous soaring function where the plane will autonomously hunt for thermals and then find those thermals and circle in them and track them as they move across the ground completely on its own. And when I heard about that, I thought, now that's just too cool. I got to try it out. So I built up this ASW28 here. This is a Volantex model. I actually made a video about this plane about two years ago. I never got around to flying that first one very much, but I did have this one great flight last winter. I didn't end up making a whole video from it though, because the run cam split that I was using was just a little bit out of focus and it kind of ruined it. Apart from that, the footage is still pretty cool. So I bought a new one and I built this one up to be even more efficient and better for soaring. An example of that is all these FPV electronics up here are embedded into the foam. So they're all like zero drag, low profile. Got a 5.8 gigahertz, 500 or 800 or something milliwatt transmitter with a little CP antenna and a run cam split there on the tail. And I beveled all the trailing edges since as the plane comes stock, the trailing edges are just square. So I made all that nice and sharp. I got rid of the flaps I just taped over all these seams um, <laughs> it's definitely a little tough to land but I just wanted to ditch the extra weight of those servos and just tape over all that crap and make it super aerodynamic got a little airspeed sensor out there on the wing that's important for the autonomous soaring and yeah she flies great super efficient I've just got the stock motor with a 3000 milliamp hour three cell battery in there but I'm not really concerned about how efficient the power system is because I'm more looking into uh, thermaling and getting long flight times that way like I said it's got a pix racer I'm using the dragon link high power telemetry radio and that is used both obviously for my RC control but that's also sending telemetry and uh, Mavlink data from the Pix racer here down to my laptop ground station that I'm running Q ground control with. And I've got Dragon Link V3 there on the back of my old spectrum radio. Then I've got my little FPV screen right there. So here's how this works. I'm gonna make a waypoint mission and have the plane fly over this field. And as it's doing that, if it senses a thermal, it will go from mission mode to loiter mode and it'll just circle in that thermal and track it as it moves across the ground. So let's give this a shot. Autonomous launch. So it's a few hours after I first tried to fly the plane this morning. Um, and that's because my Dragon Link telemetry was kind of cutting out and I wasn't able to get a very good uh, telemetry signal with my ground control software. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that was, but I switched over to the RF Design 900X modules. Um, there are like 900 megahertz telemetry modules, and that seems to be working much better. Okay, so now we're in mission mode. Hallelujah. Okay, so basically my understanding of how this is supposed to work is that it, it follows a waypoint mission, but it never actually gets to the waypoint altitude because you're supposed to set the waypoint altitude above the soar altitude cutoff, which at that point, when it reaches this, 180 feet, in this case, it then cuts the motor and just glides to the next waypoint and it'll just glide from waypoint to waypoint. And then when it finds a thermal or when it starts to rise up um, as it's gliding, it'll then switch from auto to loiter mode, which makes it just circle. And then their soaring algorithms somehow have it track that thermal and the plane will move with it. Or at least that's my feeble understanding of the system. So right now it's just, Mortar flight mode. oh, now it just found a thermal as it was going from waypoint to waypoint. It's like pretty much directly overhead now, so I can see it circling. Out of allowable altitude range, beginning cruise auto flight mode. So that means it just got too low, which I have that set to like 80 feet, I think. So then it motors back up into the next uh, waypoint. Yep, it's heading towards waypoint two, climbing at 10 amps. That's almost full throttle, actually full throttle's higher. Now it's going to waypoint four. So now it's uh, 200 feet. So now it's hunting for a thermal. And once it finds one, it'll switch to loiter mode. Loiter flight mode. There it goes. 
I hate it when it switches to loiter mode way over there because it's like close to the the hill. There's tall trees over there. So we'll just let it circle and see what it does. You can see how the the angle or the heading of the plane doesn't quite match up with its direction. And that's because it's kind of crabbing into the wind. So the current reading in Q ground control kind of bounces around a little bit. But I think even though it says like 0.05 or 0.01 amps or whatever, it, the motor's still off. It's just saying that because um, it's there's some noise in the current sensor and it's reading the uh, current from all the other electronics like the RF stuff and the camera. So I think the motor is truly off. As long as the current is reading like below one amp, basically. And I'm just sitting here on the ground while my robot plane finds thermals overhead. The future is now, people. Put your tinfoil hats on. It's getting kind of sketchily far away, though. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to put it into return mode on the next circle. Definitely seems to be working, though. I've been watching the current, and it hasn't gone above 0.05-ish amps. So that means the motor's off and the climb rate is anywhere from negative two to positive four. So it seems to be climbing. It's us the climb rate is usually in the positive. Okay, I'm getting too far away though. Too far for comfort. I'm gonna put it back into mission or uh, auto. Auto flight mode. And the plane should come back to waypoint number five. Wow, it worked. That's so cool! It is kind of hard to tell if it's like actually tracking the thermal or if it's just getting lift as it circles downwind because there's so much... No, I don't want that. I want you to go to auto. Auto. Go to auto. Okay. Auto flight mode. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because there's probably so many thermals out today and there's just so much lift that it's just kind of, you know, finding little pockets of lift everywhere. Um, I don't know. I think what I'll have to do is a comparison flight where I uh, fly like early in the morning when there's not going to be any thermals with the same battery and just kind of see how long it'll stay up for and then compare that to mode. how long I'm able to fly now. It's such an efficient plane though. It'll fly for pretty long despite how small the battery is. Like right now I'm running a 2600 milliamp hour 3S pretty small for a plane of this size at least the wingspan is pretty damn Lawyer big flight mode no go to auto auto, auto flight yeah mode. like there should be a parameter where it only catches thermals if they're within like you know x amount of feet from home that would be nice and then it starts to head home if it rides a thermal past x distance away so i don't want it to just catch a thermal and then fly away Although, if I were out in the desert with a ton of room, I probably would want that. I'm going to increase that, uh, that parameter even more. Soar V-speed. This is how fast it has to be rising vertically in order to catch a thermal. I'm going to put that to one meter per second. So now it's uh, harder for it to trigger thermaling circle mode. I'm going to need to take this out to the desert Lord, flight where mode. I have more space and try it. Okay, welcome home, plane. So, it's pretty close. Next time it finds a thermal, I'll let it start to circle again. Yeah, it's pretty low. It's gonna, it's gonna jet up here pretty soon. Once it reaches its soar, min, altitude or whatever. Uh, soar, alt, min. This one's 60 feet. Out of allowable altitude range. There it goes. Beginning cruise, auto flight mode. So now my motor turns on and I realize how dead my battery is. It's down to 10 volts, so. After it starts to glide again, I'll probably have to uh, think about landing pretty soon. Lord of flight mode. Okay, thermal time. I'm assuming the same, same thing is gonna happen. It's just gonna blow downwind again. So this is the RF Design 900X that I switched over to for telemetry instead of my Dragon Link there. 
The Dragon Link telemetry has worked well for me in the past. I'm not sure why it wasn't working this morning. I'll have to look into that. Like I said, it could be because of my antenna placement in the wing of the plane. So the plane is now thermaling in loiter mode, and it's just kind of tracking downwind with the thermal. It's hard to say if it's actually like tracking the thermal, or if it's just kind of circling and moving downwind and just kind of finding random pockets of lift and staying aloft that way. But the motor has been off um, this whole time and it's still just circling downwind. The climb rate is in the positives with the motor off, so that means it's definitely getting lift. Pretty cool. I'm getting pretty far away now, so I'm going to throw it back into return to home mode. Um, return to launch. Return to launch flight mode. Yeah, it's getting pretty far away. And my battery voltage is way too low. Oh, jeez. Since I'm flying into the wind to get home. I really need to take this out into the desert or somewhere more wide open and just see how much altitude I can gain out of thermals with this. Pretty awesome. Luckily, I think it's not really using much power for motoring home because um, it's climbing and the current is near zero, which means it's like finding lift on the way home. We're just in thermals, going through thermals or something. I don't know. There's probably just so many thermals today since it's spring and a nice day with not a lot of wind. All the wind is really probably just thermal cycles rolling through. But okay, the plane is here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and land it. Manual flight mode. Well, that was a good first test of the RDU Pilot soaring mode. I want to take it out to the desert or somewhere further away with more space and see how much altitude I can gain from thermals alone. That will be the true test. But anyways, so this is the KML file from the log data from that flight. And what we see here is the position of the plane throughout the flight and the colors indicate different flight modes. And then this black box thing that you see here is the waypoint mission. So we can turn off different bits of data here and just look at the thermaling section. So it's pretty cool that you can view this in 3D space. If I zoom in here and then look up, you can kind of get a better idea of altitude. Okay, so that's the last thermal session that it went into. And so there's a hill right here. And it reached peak altitude right here. And then as it started to go up the hill, it was kind of losing altitude. And this is all in loiter mode, so it was just circling through here. So I'm guessing it got like, uh, it kind of looks like the thermals were strongest down in the fields here. And then once it got to the forest, it started descending. But that's kind of opposite of what I would guess because there's a hill right here. So it would be getting ridge lift right in this section. And that's kind of close to where it peaked in altitude. But where I would think that it'd be getting a lot of ridge lift, it started to go down. So there was wind probably ranging from 5 to 10 miles an hour that day. So I would expect the thermals to be blowing across the ground, but this doesn't really look like a thermal blowing across the ground. I'm going to go on the record and say here that this plane was not actively tracking a thermal as it moved downwind. It was just kind of circling and getting <laughs> lift because there was a crap load of lift on it. So I think what I need to do is increase the soar minimum vertical speed setting so that it finds less thermals, but the thermals that it does find are stronger. And then maybe we'll see some real altitude gain performance instead of just kind of drifting along randomly like you see here. And you can see how low I got here. Probably a little too close for comfort. Here we have a graph of motor current and altitude. So you can line up where these little red nubs are where the motor was on, and then the green line is altitude. So you can see every time the motor turns on, it climbs pretty steeply. Um, 
and then the motor turns off and it kind of goes up and down and up and down and up and down and just kind of uh, gets the lift from thermals and you can tell like right here it's definitely gaining lift with no power at all from the motor um, and then it goes down and then right here it gets a little spike of lift and then down and um, another big notable one is right here um, it looks like this section here was a big thermal it went up 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 and then hit some sink and then dropped really quickly and then went to its sore min altitude and then that triggered the motor to turn on and it jetted back up so this is kind of a cool graph um, excuse the poor unit scaling but that's pretty neat to look at. Here's the RF Design 900X uh, telemetry radio that I installed instead of the Dragon Link. And here's the other side. I kind of literally just tossed it into the plane, so I need to install that in a more permanent way. This stuff is super awesome. You can read up on it on the RDU Pilot website. Thanks to the people who developed the soaring mode. I think it was someone's like thesis project or something like that. I don't know. But it's fun to play around with. So stay tuned for the next autonomous soaring video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Communication lost.